Welcome back to another episode of the Brand New Podcast, number 194. On today's show, Etihad Airways launches a global pilot recruitment drive, Aer Lingus pilots protest over pay demands, Qatar Airways to buy a stake in Virgin Australia, British Airways luggage problems, Japan Airlines faces safety concerns, FedEx retires 22 Boeing 757s, the most spacious premium economy seats ranked, Airbus cuts profit forecast amid supply chain issues, and Boeing resumes deliveries to China. Hi, pal. I'm a bit pissed off today, actually, guys. Why? After all the time that we've been doing the podcast and trying to push it and grow the show, turns out all we would have had to do is a hot <laughs> and spit on that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you haven't yeah. seen that video, <laughs> you don't know what we're talking about. We're living under a rock. <laughs> Yeah, oh, crazy, yeah. yeah. It's insane. It's weird. Uh, you can do what you can to try and beat the algorithm, but uh, something like that. Yeah, all it takes is uh, one dirty slap and uh, the viral go- <laughs> the video goes viral on on, on TikTok. But uh, aviation news, yeah, let's do it. Is what we do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Etihad is launching an international recruitment drive. Uh, to hire hundreds of pilots over the next 18 months. Aimed to expand its route network and double its fleet by 2030. Starting later in June, uh, there's a roadshow in Cyprus. The roadshow will cover eight European countries before expanding globally. Etihad seeks pilots for, for its entire fleet, the 320s, 350s, 380s, trip 7s, 787s, and the freighter division. The COO highlighted career progression and the Abu Dhabi lifestyle, which seems to be uh, hot on the, the list there of, of pros for this Etihad job. Uh, their CEO plans to hire 1,500 to 2,000 staff this year alone. Etihad aims to triple passenger numbers to 33 million and double its fleet to 150 planes by the end of the decade. Benefits include tax-free salary, housing, schooling allowance, and discounted tickets. How far would that schooling allowance go if you had something like that? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a it's a viable option. You know, Etihad is one of the. I think we speak about them the least of the big three. Yeah, the the big guys, and uh, I suppose uh, Riyadh will be adding into that mix. But Etihad definitely the the quieter of the the bunch and. Maybe that's because I think there's there's less Saffirs there, hey? They're not uh, not as many South Africans there as they are at uh, Emirates. Mm. Yeah, that definitely seems to be the case. Staying with uh, Etihad, just some more news from them. They signed a deal with technology firm Astratech that will allow customers to make flight bookings using AI within their chat app. The integration aims to enhance the booking experience for customers. Basically what you're going to do there just like you would on a, basically like a bot. You can book a ticket using sort of real language. Now this is becoming a big thing. So I don't know what calendar app you use, but you know, a lot of these applications these days, you can make a request in real language, meeting with Ryan tomorrow at three o'clock. And then it breaks it down into the correct parameters within your Mm. calendar app. And I think this is more the same. I'd like a ticket to Johannesburg on Friday for two people in economy. Yeah. You know, that type of thing. So pretty cool. Uh, The airline has become the official sponsor of the Chennai Super Kings, a five-time champion of the IPL in India. The sponsorship follows Etihad's recent appointment of Bollywood actor Katrina Kaif as its brand ambassador. And uh, they're doing well. Profit of $143 million for 2023. And that's a significant increase from the 25 million in the previous year. The airline cited increased passenger numbers as a key factor in the financial turnaround. The carrier has also started direct flights between Kolkata and Abu Dhabi. These flights are operated by 320 aircraft. So lots going on uh, in Etihad. And if you want to go to that air show, uh, air show, the road show, that'll be in uh, Cyprus end of the month. Not a bad gig. Not at all. No, looking at hiring a lot of pilots, there's big growth going on there. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Well, while things are going swimmingly with uh, Etihad, see uh, that uh, Aer Lingus pilots uh, 
represented by the Irish Airline Pilots Association, are protesting over pay and demanding a 24% pay rise rejecting the original eight percent offer so we do so many podcasts these days i can't remember when the story came out i think it was last week we mentioned the eight percent offer yeah that's the one that's been turned down and they've said not so fuck they're not taking it so <laughs> they want 24 percent or nothing else <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah well good on, good on them uh you can read the next one because it's your favorite part of the world ah. as well <laughs> yeah, so Qatar airways is in talks to acquire up to 20 percent stake in virgin australia Potentially announcing uh, an acquisition early July. This uh, would enhance the acquisition partnership similar to Emirates and Qantas. Owned by Bain Capital, uh, which uh, bought Virgin Australia in 2020, they have plans an IPO, and uh, this deal will require approval from Australia's Foreign Investment Review Board. Yeah, so it's not a done deal. It's got to mm. go through a bit of a process, but can't be a bad thing, Qatar and Virgin Australia joining forces. Do Virgin Australia have anything to do with uh, Virgin Atlantic? I don't think so. I don't know. No, it's just a subdivision. You think? Mm. Like a BA, Comair yeah. setup. Yeah. Uh, baggage problems at Heathrow, Terminal 5, due to? It's the summer IT time. issue. No, uh, IT I was just going to say, this story always pops up in the middle of the uh, European summer. Yeah, this was a malfunction that began at 2 in the afternoon, affected baggage handling and causing significant congestion. BA previously invested £750 million to improve its IT systems. Passengers were advised it could take up to three days to retrieve their bags, air tags. You've got you to grab yourself an air tag. <laughs> at least you could probably cruise down to the airport and at least know that your bag is there. Yeah. But uh, IT issues, you're going to see more and more of us. We've had a discussion, if, even with the pod, if some of the software that we use for the pre- and post-show stuff, if that doesn't work for whatever reason the servers go down we we ain't doing a podcast yeah i know we so it's heavily use. reliant on uh, on on software yeah and it infrastructures with everything that it yeah, when it when it doesn't work it's a problem today up there. there was a i don't know how old it was uh, earlier on in the week i saw a i think it was a forum going on in somewhere in the uae they had the CEO of Riyadh speaking, and he was speaking about uh, what they're doing digitally within the airline. And obviously starting with that clean sheet of paper, that they have major, major things uh, planned. But there's no backup, eh? <laughs> there's no backup. But I suppose uh, that's just the way it is. We'll keep an eye. Uh, Japan Airlines faces major safety concerns due to training shortfalls and communication issues among staff exacerbated by the pandemic era retirements and workforce shifts key incidents included january accidents at tokyo geez that was in january already yeah and uh, runway encroachment errors japan's transport ministry plans to enhance safety measures to address the issues i would never have thought we would be talking about safety and japan airlines as a problem in the same sentence yeah very unusual. FedEx are retiring uh, 22 of their Boeing 757 freighters uh, as of this month, uh, citing modern. Uh, mo mo <laughs> it's going to sound like Joe Biden here. Modernization yeah. and efficiency. So their fiscal Q4 revenues fell 53% to $201 million. And uh, this decision includes a $157 million non cash impairment charge and closure of seven facilities. Lower international cargo yields and losing their USPS contract to UPS contributed to these changes. So Yeah, FedEx and cuck. <laughs> and uh, shout out to the 757 because that's still one of the most legit planes ever, I think. Yeah. I love that aircraft. I wonder if they're going to scrap them or if we're going to see <laughs> no, another be in 20 odd 757s bombing around yeah. the continent soon enough. 100%. <laughs> uh, most spacious economy seats. Any ideas? Uh, yes, I don't know. The, the competition is wild out there. What's the, the the best economy seat that I've been on was on a Qatar flight, 350. Really? Yeah, by far. The seat was mm -hmm. very, very spacious. I would go so far as to say it was about the same as Air France premium economy. Really? Yeah, it was very, very good. Shit. They say here, 
Japan Airlines, Air New Zealand, and Singapore Airlines offer the most spacious premium economy seats. Japan leads with 42-inch pitch seats, while New Zealand and, yeah. So New Zealand, Singapore, and Japan. Yeah. If you're traveling on the economy side. Tell you uh, what, I would have been hellishly surprised if I had seen Lufthansa on that list, because Lufthansa, yeah, I think, crap. have the worst seats in the world. Yeah. Um, Emirates leads it uh, in terms of seat quality, whatever you're judging that on. Yeah. They have to make good seats because when they retire the seats, they go and make <laughs> bags, bags for African school children. Fart bags. Airbus <laughs> <laughs> uh, cuts profit amid uh, supply chain issues. I never saw that one coming. Uh, shares dropped 10% the other day. And basically, long story short, yeah, they can't produce enough aircraft because they can't get in the necessary titanium and other things to build the aircraft. So supply chain issues are a major problem for Airbus and a pity for them at this uh, time because, man, if there was a time to capitalize on Boeing's inadequacies and their accounting-dominated leadership, which has <laughs> caused this mess. What's happened with the, the people there stuck in space? Yeah, so... I mean, I was trying to catch up on an article just now. I just missed it. I got interrupted. But uh, apparently even Elon Musk is having a bite at Boeing saying, you know, mm. you see now. Yeah. <laughs> you, need, uh, you need a mix. But, uh, man, it just seems to that, that full-on accounting culture there has bitten them in the ass badly. Yeah. Uh, on a positive note for Boeing, they have resumed deliveries to China. That's the trip seven freighters and the seven eight sevens after a halt by the CAA in May for a battery review. Deliveries of the Max will restart soon as well. The move addresses Boeing financial woes with 206 Max jets awaiting delivery to carriers like Air China and China Eastern. <laughs> Man, <laughs> you might be regretting that decision. <laughs> but I suppose that they they just need aircraft. They were probably I suppose it's too late to jump on the on a new order for Airbuses. You, you're too far down the queue. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we had we had some nice listener comments from uh, last week. Andrew Evans sent me a whole whack of information, and uh, yeah, shout out to Andrew. I actually mentioned to you, Andrew is like a legit aviator. He's one of these lives, breathes, and eats aviation. Yeah. So he always get awesome, Jen. And, you know, he always sends me something like out of a manual yeah. you know, if you ask a question. So I've got some awesome stuff that uh, I can't show you all because there's actually too much of it. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, shout out to Andrew. Thanks for that. And then uh, Martin Locklear says, for me, a challenging airport is one that ha has either complex, confusing, or poorly marked taxiways with hidden wingspan restrictions conveniently put in the fine print in some Jefferson reference page. Most accidents tend to occur on the ground. Yeah. True, true story. story in a big airplane. A big thanks to Imre Cruz as well because uh, he sent us a whole whack of information on the, uh, the Airbus yep. soft go around stuff as well. So um, yep. Shout out to Imre. We were sort of inundated with all the, yeah. the, the factual stuff. But and, uh, we are a lot more clued up on soft go <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, thanks, guys, for, for the remarks and the info. Really appreciate it. And last but not least, there is an awesome UFC event this weekend, if you're interested in watching. Alex Pereira fighting Yuri Poraska. That's going to be a cracker. And then Brian Ortega versus Diego Lopez in the pre-main event. Going to be awesome. Yeah. That's on the, it'll be early Sunday morning, about 7 o'clock in the morning if you're in South Africa. Looking forward to it. That's it. I nearly thought there was going to be a UFC event uh, just before the podcast show started because there was a bunch of guys making a noise out the studio. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> some of them nearly got jet <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, jeez. Oh, yeah. But uh, thanks for the show, Paul. Hope yeah. you all enjoyed it. Have a good weekend ahead, everyone. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. But... The biggest news of the week was we've got a new Patreon supporter. We do. Yeah. Gavin Hitzroth. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, that's magic. Thanks for joining us, Gav. Really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, have a great weekend, everyone. See you next week. Bye for now. I was